2013, we made it. I had to see you guys last week, so it's great to see everybody here. Welcome guests and all that. So, yes, it is called Cold Call for Warm People. After being in sales for not three, but 30 years, I can tell you one thing for certain. Cold calling sucks. <laughs> it is the worst. I hate it. I never liked it. I never will like it. But there's a reason for it. We all know in order to get any type of business, you have to cold call to do it. Pick up that phone that weighs one pound or a headset that weighs five ounces. But in your mind, it weighs two tons or what an African elephant would weigh. But if you just don't let it bother you, just do what you need to do to make a sale, your boss will be happy, or if you work for yourself, like I do, you'll be happy. As long as you just put food on the table, that's, that's what it'll do. I've been lucky enough to have positions where the calls were not cold, they were warm or hot. That's right, people were already interested in buying my service or my product. But you know what? I found out that it's still not that easy. You still had to be their friend. You had to talk them into whipping out a credit card for $1,000, $5,000, maybe $200. Depends on what you're selling at the time. It's not, as, not easy, especially these days in this economy. The best advice I can give when calling on the phone is, or even in person, is to have three qualities. One, be likable and personable. Two, be funny. Very important. Third, most important, be persistent. If you do those three things in order, you'll be a great salesperson and you'll make a, great, a good or great living. I've proven this to myself over the years, being an actor and a comedian over the years. I had actually talked to many people. I've gotten many, many sales, many commissions over the years. You just have to do it right. You know, actually, being in sales is being an actor. How many people are in sales here? Yes or no? Okay, so you can kind of relate to this, right? Now let's talk about the first one, likable. When you pick up the phone and the person answers, you don't just go right into the pitch. No, 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 no. Ask how they're doing. Talk about the weather. Is it cold? Is it warm? Whatever. Ask about sports. I've done that before. Hey, how about those Lakers? <laughs> how about the Mets? Yeah. Be their friend. I've actually had people talk to me for about five, six, seven minutes about why their Mets suck or what happened to the Lakers. After a while, I wish I didn't ask him the question. <laughs> we just go on and on and on. It's like, Jesus, Joe, come on. Humor. After you get their attention, then throw the humor. I have actually done silly voices on the phone. And you guys know me with my voices. When I sold mortgage leads, this is a true story. The highest, the, the biggest issue were leads were used to come from India and Pakistan. It's called outsourcing, as they say. So these guys would come up to me and, and you know on the phone and say, um, "Hey, what do you guys use? Are they American? Are they overseas? Are they Indian? Where the hell are the leads coming from?" And they say, "No, no, 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 no. They're American. They don't come from India. No, no, no. No, I'm telling you, they're the truth. They are amazing and in America." They gotta laugh. Plus, I'm on the good side. One time I had an English woman on the phone ask her where England she was from. You gotta be careful by this one because sometimes they sound Irish or Australian. <laughs> they may sound English sometimes. <laughs> I, of course, went into my British accent and told them that I had a, a lovely English girlfriend. And they, she talked like Julie Andrews. And then she was so grateful, graceful, and she cooked. Like shepherd's pie, the spot tea. It's wonderful. 
I want her got the clothes. We got, got the sale. That's it. After you get them laughing their butt off, and then you go into the pitch, and you kiss them. Okay, he does it. Can't kiss them on the palm. Your sales, you know, kiss and sales is keep it simple, stupid. Right? Last one, persistent. Of course, after that, you have to be persistent because buyers are what? Liars. <laughs> These salespeople get this. <laughs> so make sure you have a file of days and times of callback. I'm really old school. You know, some of my friends use the sales force, you know, and all these things in the computer. Screw that. I use manila <laughs> envelopes. I use manila envelopes. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, certain times, this kind of thing. Okay? And it works great. It's been working for, for years. I've had many deals come to me just because I called them back. Guys say, John, you actually called me back Tuesday at 2 o'clock on the 29th. Yeah, Joe, you ready? Uh, yeah, I am ready. Boom. Many people don't do that. Another thing is, take notes on everything they say. Everything. If they're married with kids, write it down. If they have a dog, a cat, write it down. Even if they were divorced. You know, you guys have talked about getting a divorce. They ran on about their wife and this and the kids and other guys like, yeah, I understand, yeah. I just laugh with them and of course they get the sale. Bottom line is, just pretend that the person on the other end is already a buyer. It's all mental. It really is. They want to buy from you no matter what it is. It's called pre-closing. In your mind, whatever it is, they are a deal. Final thoughts on this is don't be scared of the phone. I know many of the people work out of their homes and make calls that they don't really want to make. But when you do it, Make a sale. The best thing about making a sale is that phone that you thought was really heavy, like a two tons, just became as light as a feather. Now you look forward to making that call. And you're warm or hot, and it's, you're not cold anymore. <laughs>